Hey guys and welcome back to another realm video and today we're going to be learning about the Tomb of the Ancients. So first off we have the Eagle Sentry which has 4000 health and 35 defense. I like to call them bacon tossers. And second we have the Lion Archer with 3200 health and 20 defense. Now these shoot even if you're cloaked so be careful if you're rushing on a rook. And the Jackal Priest 2500 health and 5 defense. Now, they're not that much of a threat compared to the Bacon Tosser because he shoots around in circles and flings bacon at you, and the Lion Archer paralyzes you and can screw you over. Next, we have the Elemental Turrets. Now, the Tome Thunder Turret it shoots out paralyzed attacks that do 10 to 100 damage, paralyzing you for 1.4 seconds. Now, the Tomb Fire Turret is 30 to 70 damage. That armor breaks you for 2 seconds. And you be careful of this, because if you get paralyzed under this with a bunch of scarabs, you're pretty much instantly dead. Now, the final turret we have is the Tomb Frost Turret, which does 70 damage and slows you for 2 seconds. Now, we have these swarms. There are 3 different colored swarms, and they all do different things. So, the Red Swarm has 3000 health, no defense, and shoots two shots. One of the shots does 40 damage, armor pierce, and the other one just does 80. The yellow swarm has 3000 health, zero defense, and both shots do a debuff. One of them does 40 damage with blind for four seconds. The other one does 80 damage, but confused for two seconds. And the blue swarm has 3000 health, but it has 20 defense, unlike the others. And he shoots two shots as well. One does 60 damage and the other one does 100 and weaks you for 1.2 seconds. Now we have the Mummy and Scarab. The Mummy is 3000 health with 20 defense and he shoots out two shots that look very similar to each other. One does 30 damage and the other does 30 as well but it confuses you for two seconds. And it also spawns scarabs. Now the scarabs, they have 300 health and 0 defense. They shoot 2 shots. I don't really pay attention to the green one. I just run away from the scarab. And another shot that does 20 damage for paralyzed for 0.8 seconds. And these are the guys that can screw you over in a tomb. Next we have the jackals. Now the jackals is one of the very, very harmful things in the tomb. And better watch out for them because you can die pretty much instantly if you stand on one. So we have the Jackal Lord with 6,000 health and 40 defense. The shot does 140 damage and spawns uh, three little jackals, a Jackal Warrior, Jackal Assassin, and a Jackal Veteran. The Jackal Warrior does 80 damage and he has 1,400 health with 10 defense. The Jackal Assassin has 2,000 health 30 defense and does a shot with 100 damage. The Jackal Veteran has 1800 health, 20 defense, and does 120 damage. And all the shots look the same with the little jackals. Next, we have a Sarcophagus, or I like to call him Cerufarigus. Each Cerufarigus has 15,000 health, 100 defense, and they stun for 3 seconds. But there's Worshipping Priest and Priest S inside the Sark room with you. One has 8,000 health and 20 defense, shoots two shots, one of them weaks you for five seconds and the other does 100 damage. And the Priestess has 7,000 health, 15 defense, and the Boomerang actually does zero damage but it weaks you for seven seconds and the second shot does 80 damage. And to actually kill the Sarufrigus, you have to kill the Worshipping Priest or you have to do enough damage to kill the Sark before waking up the priest. And the Sark drops four different color tinctures. Now we have the Treasure Sark or, tre or Golden Cerufrigus that has 50,000 health, 100 defense, and drops attack pots, death pots, speed pots, nine or tier 9 to 10 gear, weapon and armor, and tier 4 rings. They spawn canopic jars. Now the canopic jars, when you break them, 
they have one health and zero defense. They drop health pots and mana pots. And they spawn scarabs upon death. Next thing we have is the three tomb bosses. Now, Bess is one of the three bosses that has a thousand or a hundred thousand health and fifty defense. Now, the ideal of a tomb is to either start with Beth, Bess if you have a good group or not if you have a pretty small group and can't keep damage consistent on Bess. Now, Bess does four different shots, three of which do damage. He has the dart shot, which does 240 damage. He has armor break for 5 seconds, which does 150 damage. And he does his little stun shield, which do 160 damage and stuns you for 1.2 seconds. And the weak just weaks you for 10 seconds. They only shoot out when they're trying to wake up Bess. Now Bess spawns artifacts in a certain phase, which have 3000 health and 50 defense. And their shots do 50 damage and do weak for two seconds and best drops a life pot a tome of holy protection a ring of the pyramid three different treasures and a tomb snake or eggs which is sort of disappointing next we have nuts now nut is probably the scariest to do the rage on because you don't exactly know when it's going to happen. Nut has 80,000 health and 15 defense and it does a bunch of attacks actually. It does a dart shot which does 180 damage. It does quiet shots, quiet boomerangs for 40 and they quiet you for one second. 40 damage for weak shots for five seconds. Um, slow shots for 40 damage for 5 seconds blind shots for 40 damage also 5 seconds and a black arrow which is armor break for 3 seconds and it does 40 damage and another big arrow that does 200 damage and paralyzes you for 1.4 seconds now during its armor break phase or its rage it shoots out these blue icicle looking shots that paralyze you for 1 second and do 50 damage it also does weak when you're trying to wake it up for 10 seconds. It also spawns in artifacts just like Bess. And the artifacts have 2000 health, 20 defense, and the shots do 90 damage and slow you for 3 seconds. Now Nut can drop a life potion, a ring of the sphinx, 3 different treasures, and an egg. Now finally we have Geb. Geb has 90,000 health, 30 defense, and it's the final one you should do, and you'll probably need a long range to do the rage. It's very ideal to do that. Now the shots, the dart shots do 280 damage, the boomerangs do 100 damage and slow you for 5 seconds, and the little fire dart looking thing, it does 30 damage, but it armor pierces you. And it also does a weak phase when you're trying to wake it up, and it weaks for 10 seconds. Now during its armor break phase, it'll let out these fireballs and scarabs. The fireballs do 80 damage to you. And there are a, another dart that does 200 damage to you. Now during a certain phase, Geb will let out artifacts and scarabs, which can kind of screw you over if you're not paying attention. Geb. And the artifacts have 2500 health, 20 defense, and do 180 damage. Now, Geb drops a life pot, a Nile, three treasures, and eggs. Here is me brushing a tomb. Uh, there was a jackal in the hallway. You should never have jackals in the hallway because you're going to eventually rush back if there's no anchor. Now, as you can see, what I'm doing is I'm unclearing a lot of the tiles inside the rooms so I can find out where the next dark rooms are.
because when I used to rush, I'd always get lost because I didn't know where the strikes were. Now here, we are insta-killing the strike. All you need for this is a warrior, paladin, and a knight to keep the stuns up. We didn't have a warrior, but we had armor break from Bryce. As you can tell from early on, that the strikes have defense, so armor break actually does work on it. Now, continuing on with the tune, like, there's some times where we mess up and we get weak, but we kill, insta kill most of it. So, insta killing tomb, always good. You should try to do it if you have a bunch of people with you. Now, things you have to be careful about is getting confused or paralyzed in the tomb because it could lead you to a different spot you don't want to be in and that could insta kill you if there's a bunch of things around you now luckily I have a good pet that heals me so I have perma perma cloak so that's useful when rushing and as you can see scarab just to walk in there and <laughs> paralyze my friend's brother okay we are almost done rushing going I think there's two strikes left and there's usually five Starks in a tomb. There could be treasure rooms, but I think there's always going to be one Stark. Now, this is the part where we mess up, because one of us got weak. Yep, our Paladin. And we go for it. We kept going, and we didn't make it because we ran out of stuns. Ah, thanks, Devin. <laughs> so, help out a little, I think. Do I? I don't know. Yeah, there I am, shooting. And then I rush back to the last Sark. And by the time I get to the last Sark, oh, yeah, I'm looking for it. And then I ended up getting confused in the wrong way. But by the time I get to the last Sark, my friends are done with that. Yeah, so look, if there's a jackal covering the hallway, you don't want to walk over it because there might be a chance where it shoots and you just die. So here is us finishing off the last Sark. And insta kill. Here is us actually completing the tomb. Um, so we had pretty good, a uh, pretty good group. So we started off with best. A lot of people usually start off with best. But if you're doing like a duo tomb or a solo, and there's not much damage going in, you should probably start off with nut to make it easier. So here we are killing Bess. Um, we had Bryce. Thank you, Bryce, for armor breaking. So I was doing rages, but of course they wanted to do do. Uh, they wanted to do more damage to get drops, and I ended up getting a zero after I yelled at them for moving out of the way. <clears throat> so that was disappointing. I think I get a zero three the whole tune. So next we started off with nut. Uh, Bob Marley kept paralyzing the bosses. If you guys are wondering, Bob Marley is my pet. So, Bob Marley was paralyzing. And right here, it was taking very small circles, which kind of bugs me because you can't really circle in. There's the rage. Um, I think we had someone next to Devin's brother. But here's me doing the rage. Be careful to paralyze because they can kind of screw you over. Now, I got another zero, not surprising, because there's armor break and there's stuns going in. Anyway, so, uh, we are kind of wrecking Geb at the moment. We're doing a lot of damage, and the only way to have them go through their armor break phase is not to do a lot of damage in certain phases. Now, Bob Marley kept paralyzing them, or paralyzing Geb, and I thought it was a good sign, because I would get something, because they would back off. But... As it starts to rage, I go in. Now, when you're doing best, you should circle out. Never stand right by his side, because you could eat all the boomerangs. So, it'd be good just to let him follow your lead, which is sort of hard for me, because then he'll get paralyzed. And when a tomb boss gets paralyzed, then it switches directions. So here you see, he went to his armor break phase, because we didn't do much damage to it. So, we'll keep circling around like I learned the hard way not to stand by him because I lost the many knights to it and here nobody kept the stun up because we have pro knights right yeah so I get a life 
finally after what four tunes <laughs> and for nut I can't the only thing about nut is try your best not to get hit by the slows because if you get slow then it's gonna be hard to dodge shots and here's the dance phase uh, for dance you just wait until it comes out and armor breaks as you can see it shoots those icicle shots so we missed it because my pet paralyzed again great Bob Marley so here I get sat on by not and not can't really shotgun anyone unless it's raging so you don't have to really worry so here we finally get it we do damage sorta and somebody shot get so it starts shooting out weeks but if Gep gets hit, then Nut will just heal it up because Nut is activated. Same thing goes with Bess. No, Bess gets healed if he's activated by Nut, I believe. And here's the Rage. Devin almost died. <laughs> so we try to drag it out because bringing him around the corner is really good because then all the shots will hit the wall. Now, on to Geb. Now, we lost our priest early in the tomb, which was going to do the rage. So, like, long range classes are really good for tombs. As you can see, we'll try to do the rage on melees, and we ended up failing. But, we go ahead, we start Geb. Now, for Geb, you don't want to stick too close, because scarabs will come out, and they will paralyze you under Geb. And, that's how I died a lot. And I've yet to die from an artifact, which is kind of crazy because everyone I know died from an artifact before. So here it is, raging. We gave Devin the Grum, so he can go in and stun. But Devin, he's just, I don't know, he panics too much. So he didn't end up getting hits on it. So we spent about five minutes going in, trying to paralyze. Devin gets DC'd. One guy gets Nexus, or actually both guys get Nexus, and I'm on my own, trying to do it, and it still doesn't work. So I just ended up Nexusing, and we popped another tomb and did it. So that's Geb Rage for you. Uh, Geb Rage is probably the hardest Rage to do. Best Rage is the most tedious, and Nut Rage is the most surprising, because it just shoots out. Now, thank you guys for watching. I put a lot of work and effort into this video. Hopefully you guys can drop a thumbs up on this video. Thank you guys for watching. And subscribe for more. Bye-bye.